afternoon. The end of our week here. Got this uh, turned off. Okay. Um, are you excited? It's our last day of new material. And it's not really new. I'm going to show you how it's not really new, but um, it's really connected to what we were just doing Monday. Uh, so as you work to understand Monday's lesson, today's lesson should become fairly clear. You'll see there's basically one extra step um, that was sort of integrated into what we did. And so where are we? We are needing to scroll down. I do have the stuff for the final exam showing, but I haven't really reviewed it. You can see it's old dates and Cessos from spring, so I'll be updating that. But there are, uh, one error I noticed, this was originally labeled section 14.2, but there's no homework for 14.2. As I went in, I go, what? Oh, it's actually 14 point, uh, sorry, 14, it was labeled 14.1. There is no 14.1. I changed it to what it's supposed to be is 14.2. So you'll find homework for 14.2. Uh, the PowerPoint slides say 14.2, so that's good. We don't do 14.1. Uh, over the weekend, hopefully you get through that, but there's also some resources to start preparing for the exam three. Uh, there are some videos in there. Again, these are from spring and maybe older some, uh, but anyway, there's some videos in there on solutions. There is a, uh, practice test, a uh, review test, uh, and I will update it again Friday and over the weekend just to make sure everything's the same. Uh, there is a, a revised one they did over the summer, but again, they, they changed just a few things, so I'll make sure that's posted, but uh, we've got that to go. And again, my hope is if we focus on this. You've got until next Wednesday, so we got a week still to get down to just this content from 13.1 to 14.2. You're gonna see 14.2 really is 13.4 with one little extra thing. Um, so any questions or concerns or comments? A little good news, I've seen the exam. There are eight multiple choice questions. No true or false, which I'm happy. I'd never like the true or false. So eight multiple choice, and the nine, 10, 11, 12. So then four open answer type questions. Um, what we're gonna do today is not exactly the exam question, but it will follow the format of one of the exam questions. So if you pay attention to this, just make sure you can follow that format. And I'll let you know when we get to that point. Okay, uh, we are recording, good, okay. So we go here. So now what we're doing is, we're doing what we did Monday, is we're getting the area underneath the curve, but what we were doing is underneath the curve and the x-axis. So if we think of the x-axis as a curve y equals zero, which it is, what we're doing today isn't anything new, we're just not making it the curve y equals zero, we're making it any random curve we want to make it, okay? So we're going to see how that works. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk, th this was from Monday's lecture. We were given an integral and we did it a couple different ways, but we did it, hope it was a baseball cap problem. They, they make baseball caps. This was the rate of change, the marginal cost. So when you integrate it, you get the total cost. And remember they did it this way. Um, what I'm going to show you to connect it to what we're doing today is if you think of this, sorry, I forgot to get my crayons. There we go. So let's do that in red. So if you think of this horizontal line here called the x-axis, as the function y equals zero or f of x equals zero or whatever you want to call it, you know, it's a, it's a function, it's a constant function, then what we would have been doing is in this integral, this 
part here is the function of that curve. And it's not really a, well, it's a line. Yeah, it's a line. Uh, so what we would have done instead is we would have integrated from 100 to 200. We would have done 4 minus 0.001x, just like we did. The thing we would have added is we would have subtracted the other function. And actually, we sort of did this. We just didn't show it to you. We subtract the other function, which is just 0. And that's what today's lecture is about. The only thing that's going to be different is we're not going to use y equals 0 as the other curve, right? So it's not going to be quite as easy. There's going to be some function here. We're going to need to do some algebra to subtract the two functions, and that's it. Then we just integrate like we've been doing. So one extra step, well, maybe a couple. We have to figure out which one's on top, which one's on the bottom. So we subtract the bottom from the top. Otherwise, we get a negative value. Remember when I said if, we were, if the graph was below the x-axis that it ends up being negative area? I think we looked at that. And that's because you flipped it over. So one thing we're going to do today is we're going to take the derivative curve and graph it first. We're actually going to have two curves. Uh, we're going to graph them to see which one's on top, which one's on the bottom. And then we're just going to subtract the two, integrate like we did. So nothing extremely new and other than that little extra step. So, and, and we're going to look at a visual first. So what we're doing is we're getting the area between two curves, not just the curve and the x-axis. And so to do that, we take the top function. And again, the way we know it's on top is we graph it. It's the one on top. You can get ones that start on top and they change. We're, I, we don't have any of those in the homework. And the test doesn't have one like that. They do that in the engineering version where you, you get really so for, what we're, for our purposes, there'll be one on top, one on the bottom. Um, we'll go from A to B. We're also going to do one where they don't give us the boundaries, but they say between the intersections. So that's another thing we're going to be able to have to do is find those intersections. Okay, But we get the area between the two curves simply by, inside the integral, subtracting the two functions. We do our algebra here, and then the calculus is nothing new. Okay. And the algebra is not all that extraordinary. It's just subtracting two functions. That's all that's new today. Again, the concept is, is we're getting what? We're getting accumulation between the two. So where do we use this? We'll use one of the examples. Revenue, cost, the area between those two, profit. Right? Revenue minus cost equals profit. That's exactly what, how we get a profit from the revenue. If we have the rate of change of revenue, the rate of change of cost, the area between those two curves will actually be the profit. Not the rate of change of profit, but the profit itself. Okay. So remember, whenever we integrate, it's no, it's no longer a rate. We're going to have a little quiz here. No points involved or anything, but uh, we'll see. So here's how it works. We're given two, two functions, f of x and g of x. And they're giving some boundaries. We want to get the area between these two curves from negative 1 to 1. First step, we're going to graph it, because we need to know which one's on top. So oh, hopefully, yeah, I still have my calculator open. Should have took a better look at what that function was. X squared, let's see, can I, I'm going to keep it. A little bit smaller. And then we'll get our graphing calculator. And also this, again, this is being recorded. So watch what I do with the graphing calculator. Maybe pull up, that might be a reason to go back to the video to make sure you're able to do some of these things, uh, like find intersection between them, those kind of things. Um, OK, so we're going to put negative x 
squared minus 3x. Oops. Don't do it like that. Arrow down, do it like this. Minus 3x plus 4. So that's one curve. It's f of x. And then g of x, x squared minus 3x minus 4. Positive x squared plus 3x minus 4. And this is where it's nice to have a color version. If you don't, you just have to watch which one which one gets graphed first is going to be the top one. So y1 gets graphed first. We hit the graph. Uh, let me go to uh, zoom standard number six, just so it's a standard window. I'll graph so quickly. So f of x is actually is the blue one. The first one that came on the screen was blue. It's on top. The other one's on the bottom. And we are going, our boundaries that they gave us are from negative 1 to positive 1, where they have an intersection, uh, which is good. So we'll see how all this works. Okay. I'm also going to show you how you can check your answer with the graphing calculator. Now, the graphing calculator will not directly calculate the area between these two curves. But what we're going to do is set it up, have them subtract each other, and get the area under that one. So same way we're kind of going to do this. Uh, but the main thing we did this is to see which one's on top. That one's going to go first. The one that's on bottom gets subtracted from the first one. Okay, so now we come back here. So I'm going to switch over to blue, and I'm just going to label this as the top, and this as, maybe change colors, we'll label this as the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate from negative 1 to 1 f of x minus g of x dx. Um, so I'll put the num I'll put it in here now. f of x is minus x squared minus 3x plus 4. And then we're going to subtract. This is one area where errors will creep in. If you don't put this parentheses, remember this negative, this subtraction has to distribute to each term of the, the other function. You could do it multiple ways. You could just, as you write it, change the sign of each, func each term. Or you could do it the way I'm doing it, whichever way works for you. But I'm just going to do this to highly emphasize the need to distribute that. Because if you don't, then we have trouble. Okay. So this is the integral from negative 1 to 1. We've got a, so I'm going to distribute that negative right here, here, and here. So this becomes negative x squared. This becomes plus 3x. This becomes plus 4. So when we combine like terms, we get negative 2x squared, negative 3x. See, did I get this right? Oh, yeah, negative 3x and positive 3x. That's 0. So they, those cancel out. And then I have a positive 4 and a positive 4. That's plus 8. So far, so good? Okay, that's the new step today. So now we're done with any new stuff. It's just like what we were doing yesterday, really. This is the new stuff. Figure out which one's on top, subtract the bottom from the top, combine like terms, and now let's integrate. Yes. We're not done yet, but yeah. It, it just says, it gives you F and G. If it doesn't give you, it doesn't say which one's f and which one's g. How do you know which one is on top? You graph them. So if yeah, if it didn't label them, you got like y equals this and y equals that. You still graph them and you you figure out which one which functions on top, which ones on the bottom. Now again, it it could be you know how some kind of do serpentine stuff. It could be that one's on top first and then on the bottom second. 
they used to do that. They stopped doing that. These ones, all the homework ones I've seen, one's on top, one's on the bottom. So they're not going to get too tricky on you. Not always. Not ever. you got to figure it out. Yeah. So you have to graph them. You could use Desmos if you want because that's got the color systems. But yes, you need to be able to graph. Of course, you could guess. Here's the thing is if you get it wrong, it's not a big deal. You'll get a negative area and you'll know, wait, area is not negative. Just make it positive and you're actually okay. So it's not so critical. If we did it the wrong way, we would just get a negative answer. Oh, it's supposed to be positive. You'd be fine. Okay. Just know to subtract. Okay. So let's finish this up. We're going to integrate 2x squared is going, or negative 2x, it becomes negative 2x to the third, right? We add 1 to the exponent and divide by that new exponent. 8 becomes plus 8x, right? A number becomes just something x. This is our integrated values, and we're going to go from negative 1 to positive 1. Okay. Remember, we're going to use the FTC, Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, which means we will plug in 1 first, and then we'll subtract the value we get when we plug in negative 1. And then we are done. So let me go up here. Let me do it up here. So I'm going to take this function, negative 2, 1 to the third, over 3 plus 8 times 1 minus, I'll put the parentheses, again, we're subtracting the whole part, but what we will do is we'll get it into a number first. So this is negative 2, negative 1 squared, a uh, cubed, sorry, um, over 3 plus 8 times negative 1. And then we just need to calculate that so we can, it's just arithmetic, pull out the calculator, plug it in, get a number. And then again, we're also going to check it with a graphing tool. Uh, let's see. So one cubed is one, so that's negative two thirds plus eight here. Uh, so two divided by three plus eight. I come up with 8.66667. With this one, negative 1 cubed is actually negative 1, which makes that a positive 2 thirds minus 8. So 2 divided by 3 minus 8. The second part I get is negative 7.3333. Negative and a negative make it positive. So 8.666 plus 7. Oops. Oh, that's a parenthesis. Sorry. Seven point three three three. So six 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 is two thirds. Three 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 is one third. So that's going to be a whole one. Seven plus eight is fifteen. Plus one should give us sixteen. So if you plug this in, you get close to 16. That should be the area between those two curves. Questions? You okay with that? Okay. Now let me show you, I'll show you a shortcut way, uh, but it, it involves a couple key presses, and I'll show you the long way just in case. Yes. This is, oh, what did I do? Thank you. That's what I mean. You just plug it in your calculator and you believe your calculator even when you didn't check that you plugged it in <coughs> wrong. Yeah, I forgot to put negative two thirds. So I put positive. Thank you. Negative two thirds plus eight, 7.333. Thank you. And that's the reason why we also use the technology. I would have caught it. I go, wait, I didn't get 16. I, you know, I blew it. Thank you. 
So that's not right. Yeah, that's negative. We should get, we get a positive 7.333 plus another 7.333, which is going to be 14.666. or 14 and 2 thirds. That's a 3, 6. Okay, yes. Shoot, did I do it again? I messed that one up because I made that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think I probably mentally distributed the negative and made the 8 positive 8 when it's actually negative 8. Thank you. So, so it looks like we might end up with 0, right? So let's try this again. Negative, well, not quite 0. Negative 2 thirds minus 8. Negative 8.666. Okay. See, that's why I need you guys. I'll mess it all up. This is negative 8.333. Negative and a negative are positive. So actually, we're almost back to where we were. Oh, 8.66, sorry. Can I get a do-over on this? That's positive, so that's 15. We're back to where we were. We got 16 again, but so that's what I love about math. Notice I made two errors. Where else in life can two wrongs make a right? Math. If you just make the right two errors, and you get back to where you started. Okay, so we get 16. Let me. That look good. Okay, so let me show you how to use the technology to also do that so you can double check yourself. And it's really the same thing we just did. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the top function from the bottom function. I'm going to, in, the, in a third line, I'm going to do y3. I'm going to graph that function, y1 minus y2, get the area beneath the curve and the x-axis with that one, and it's going to be the same value. Okay. Now, you could manually retype these in, in y3, but what I'm going to show you is there's a way to kind of copy them in there. And there's this key, there's this key here that's called vars for variables. That's where the variables are stored. And the y variables are stored here and they're function variables. So we just hit enter, and look what comes up. We can choose one, two, y1, y2. Y. So I'm going to choose y1, because that's the one on top, because I could see that. And then I'm going to do minus vars, y vars, and function. And now I choose y2. What the calculator has done is it's taken the value from y1 and put that in there, that function, the value for y2, that function, put it in there. It's going to subtract the 2 for us. It's going to look messy on the graph unless I come to the equal sign, and I'm going to turn these top two graphs off. I turned them off so they will not show up, but they're still there. Don't delete them, otherwise this won't work, right? Because then it won't know what y1 and y2 is. So this is sort of a setup. So if you get used to this, this is a quick way to do it. Again, if you don't, just retype them as this minus that. Retype the whole thing. Uh, we're now going to graph it, and you're going to see a slightly different graph. You only see one graph, and that's the combined function. It has algebraically combined. The it subtracted the two functions for us, and this is the new function that's graphed. We get the area between that curve and the x-axis, and we will get the same value. So we do the same thing. We go second calc. Number seven, we're going to integrate this just like we did by hand. 
our lower boundary is negative 1. So the boundaries didn't change. And notice at positive 1, we're crossing the x-axis. The upper limit is positive 1. And hopefully, we get 16. Oh, yeah, 14.666. That tells me I got to go back. We still got an error in there somewhere. I did something wrong. Um, but this is what we're supposed to get when you subtract the two functions. Okay, and I'll bet you it's I, I've got a, a negative in the wrong place somewhere, which is I do it all the time. But notice we're going to go back and we're going to find an error. I guarantee you, it's got to be an error somewhere. But did you see how to do the area between two curves graphically? Okay, multiple choice test. That's all we have to do is find the right answer. And we're good. Yes? Vars. I always, I'm a little shy up with you guys, but I use the pivot bars, right? Like a little parrot on my shoulder because it's variables, but how would a pirate say variable? He'd say bars. And that's how I remember it. When you get to bars, then you see, oh, okay, why bars? Why variables? and then functions. That's the hardest part is it takes you a while. Even I, if I haven't done it a while, I'll forget about it. So it's, you know, it's not a, it's not something we use a lot. So let me go back and let's find where the error is. Okay. Let me look more carefully. Neg negative, negative, that became positive, that became positive. Negative 3, positive 4, that's 8, that's that, it becomes negative 8, oh, this becomes positive, this part here is positive 2 thirds, so it's positive 2 divided by 3, minus 8. Yeah, this one here should be negative 7.333. Negative, negative, make it positive. If you add these two together, we get 14.667. Okay, so again, if it's a show your work type one, I could see this, but again, you're going to be able to catch your errors, come back. But even if you don't, I'll be able to see if you write clearly, you know, that the, it was a negative error. Okay. Not that big. The area between those two curves. Yes. The area between the two curves, which is an amount of something, but we don't know what these functions even stand for. So it's just an amount. It's not a rate. But remember, the two functions that we're working with, we have to think of them as rates. Otherwise, it makes no sense to integrate them. They are derivatives of something. Of course. I can do a lot of them. But we'll, we'll walk through what the book does. Uh, maybe we should have done that first. But anyway, they're going to give us the right answer. So again, they say graph it. See which one's on top, which one's on the bottom. Um, and they say subtract them. Uh, and that's going to give us the area between the two curves. They've got it set up just like we did. They go ahead and do it. Um, and they switch the order. It, we had negative 2x, so this is a nice little trick. Sometimes if you have problems uh, remembering about your negatives, put the positive one in the front. And, and sometimes this would give me probably less trouble. But uh, then they integrate it. 8x minus 2 thirds x to the third. They subtract the 2 and got 44 thirds, which is 14. Well, what did we get on that? That should be.
666, yeah. So that... Okay. So that's in there. Now, this is the one I would highly recommend paying attention, maybe going back and reviewing it. So as you see, there's step by step. Uh, and incidentally, when you on the test, when they have it step by step, try to put the work for the part that you're working on, that it's asking the question underneath there. I do catch, I know some of you just kind of work through the problems. And so part of the work's here that goes to answer the question down here. But if you can, especially with this one, I think it'll be easier. So here we are. Notice the equations are the same, so we don't have to change them. But this question's a little di different. It wants to find the area between the points of intersection. So it doesn't give us the boundaries. Now, in the homework, they give you the boundary all the way. But I'll just let you know, because otherwise you wouldn't know to do this. On the test, they want you to find those intersection points. So you have to graph it to figure out which one's on top. You also have to graph it to find out what your boundaries of integration are going to be. Okay, so I'll save us a little time. Notice these are exactly the same functions. We're going to draw us, we're going to sketch the graph. It doesn't have to be real beautiful, but it should be somewhat accurate as far as where the intersection points are. So we'll come back and do that. Uh, so what we do is we come here. I'm going to go back to y equals. I'm now going to turn this third one off by hitting enter. The cool part is, is if you leave that there, you can just turn it on and off so you don't have to remember vars again. Just leave it sitting there in Y3 or maybe Y4, whatever you want. I'll do this, just leave it there. Never have to enter it. When you want it, just hit the equal sign so it's turned black and it will graph it. Okay, nice. These ones are turned off, so I'm gonna go up and hit enter to turn it on. Enter to turn this one on. I'm going to graph it. There's the two, and what I need to find is the two pla the places of intersection. Okay. Do you know how to find an intersection using a graphing calculator? You're going to find out, and this is again, you're going to need this. So intersection tool, we go to second calc. There's a tool called intersect number five. We go to number five. It's going to ask you two questions. The first one is, it's a question, first curve. It's saying, is this the first curve? Notice it's flashing on the blue curve. And sure, that's the first curve, because it needs two curves to get an intersection, right? I'll hit Enter. It says, is this the second curve? It's on the second curve. Sure, that's the second curve. And then it's going to ask for a guess. And what once if I hit Enter, it will find the intersection between those two curves the closest intersection. It's a lazy little program. So it will go find the one to the right. I'm just going to hit enter. And it finds that intersection is at x equals 1, y equals 0. So that's a point of intersection, 0, 1. Okay, so we, we sort of write that down. So that's the upper limit. How do we get the lower one? We do the same thing. We have to go second, calc, number 5, intersect. Uh, first curve we say yes, second curve we say enter for yes, but the, for the guess we need to get closer to the other point of intersection. You don't have to get too close, but you can get as close as you like. And when I hit enter now, it gets the second intersection, what happens to happen at negative four. Okay, this is really zero, but we won't worry about that. So our our limits of integration are going from negative 4 to positive 1. Okay, and again on the test you'll need to be able to do this and then you need to integrate. You need to find the area of the curve of this between these two points. Okay, yes. What's one to e minus that means negative 1, 10 to the negative 12th power. 10 to the negative 12th power, so that's point zero zero zero, like 11 zeros and then a 1. It's zero. It's a it's a calculator's way of trying to be more accurate than it can be. Okay, so it's just y is negative one. No, no, it's y equals zero. Okay. It's one times ten to the negative twelve. And you can see where it's at, it's on the x axis, so that should be y equals zero. But that, that throws people. 
e to some negative, it's going to be, is your calculator's way of saying, hey, zero, but I'm trying to show off. <laughs> I'm, you know. Okay, we got this part. Okay, so, um, and we look at this graph. Again, you're going to have your graphing calculator next to, you'll be able to draw this graph. Uh, so let's see if we can do that. No, I don't want that. So we'll just we'll sketch a graph. It doesn't have to be color. So it was negative four is an intersection point. Positive one was an intersection point. We had one that sort of went up and down, and then we had one that went down and then up. And we're going to find the area between these two curves. So that's kind of my sketch of my graph. Again, not real beautiful, but hey, it's fine. Algebraically, find the intersections. So I, I did that. I got the intersection at x equals negative 4, x equals 1. Graphically, how would I do that algebraically? I set the two functions equal to each other. So you also have to be able to do this. They will intersect where they're equal. So I will go negative x squared minus 3x plus 4 equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. And then we're going to solve for x. Um, it looks like we're going to have a quadratic, right? If I add x squared to both sides, I'm going to have 2x squared. Um, so might as well just move everything over to the other side. I'm going to add 3x and then subtract 4. Add 3x and subtract 4. Because we've sort of done this, haven't we? Um, this side is 0. This side is... 2x squared, the 3x's cancel out, that's 0, negative 4 and negative 4 is now negative 8. Um, I could add, let's see, because we're going to get an x squared, again, we're just solving a quadratic, I guess we could add 8 to both sides, Wait. Got zero. I'm going to get 4, x is equal to plus or minus 2. Um, these are not going smoothly today. I've got a plus 3 here, which, which should be a negative 3. That's what's happening. Did anyone catch that in the beginning? So I have negative 3 and negative 3 here. When I graphed it, I graphed this one as a positive 3. And I think that's because I don't know why. Okay. So these are both negative threes. Let's come back here. They should both be negative threes. Uh, 
subtract 3. Now when we graph, um, that's what we're getting. Okay, so now we're matching up with the graph that the textbook had. So I, I had that error all along. Um, needless to say, come back second calc. Let's find our intersection again, the right intersection. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter. Guess, enter. And it found this intersection at x equals 2, which actually maxes up with the algebraic way. x equals 2, y equals negative 6. And then second calc, intersect. And first curve, second curve. But for the guess, I'm going to move it closer to the other intersection. And what we're going to see is that it's at negative 2 and positive 6. OK. OK. Fortunately, I can just erase. So this one, we have intersections 2 and negative 2, negative 2, 6, and positive 2, negative 6. And it went up like this. The other one came down like this. Or wait, no, it came down like it's the point of intersection. And so we're going to get this area between these two curves. And the algebra works out. Um, you could factor out a 2. You get x squared minus 4 equals 0. Divide both by 2. The 2 goes away. x squared minus 4 factors into x plus 2 and x minus 2. So we get x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2 as our points of intersection. So usually we use the technology to check our algebra. Our algebra checked our error in the technology. But that's the reason why I want to encourage you to do both methods. Okay, Do both methods. You will catch. And again, I don't make these on purpose, but I, I just make the errors. So that's where we catch it. OK. Sketch the graph, we did that. So those are two steps you're going to want to do. Algebraically, find the intersection, set the two functions each equal to each other, solve for x. Okay. Also check it with the graph, but they should, they should both match. Write the integral expression. So the integral expression, again, we've already sort of done this, but uh, what we're going to want to see is that we're going to integral goes from negative 2 to 2. Those are the points of intersection. That's what it wanted. Um, let me go back to the first. Negative x squared minus 3x plus 4. Negative x squared plus 3x plus 4. Make sure. Oops. And then x squared minus 3x plus 4 minus x squared minus 3x minus 4. OK, dx. Now we're going to evaluate the integral with the FTC fundamental theorem of calculus. That's what we did last time. Um, so I've got to rewrite it down here. Negative 2, 2. Let's see if I can get all the. So this negative is going to distribute here. Here becomes positive, and here becomes positive. So 
that takes care of that. So negative x squared, negative x squared, we get negative 2x squared. Negative 3x, positive 3x, those cancel out. Plus 4 and plus 4 gives us a plus 8. So we've already done this. Again, the only difference now is our, our limits on the integration are different. Okay, But we'd want to see these steps worked out. Integrate it, negative, negative 2 x to the third divided by 3. So I'm integrating, adding 1 to the exponent, plus 8x. And then we go from negative 2 to 2. Okay. Plug in the 2, the positive 2 for the upper end. Plug in the negative 2 from the bottom end and subtract those two values. Okay. Just like we did when we were doing 1 and negative 1, except we just have different values. We may want to use our graphing, ca our calculator to handle that. That's fine. Um, but the algebra part pretty much is done. Um, I'm just going to write out the line. I'm not going to do it because we had such a successful time last time. Minus negative 2 negative 2 to the third over 3 plus 8 times negative 2. And again, just do the arithmetic on that. What I'm going to show you, though, is I will check it this way. And because I left that y1 minus y2, as long as it's, you know, y1 is on top, right? Yeah, the blue one's on top. The red one's on the bottom. So now I can turn this one off, turn this one off, and we've got y1 minus y2. You might even want to put y1 minus y2 and right below it y2 minus y1. Just leave them sitting there and turn on whichever one's appropriate, right? Whichever one's on top, because sometimes maybe y2 might be on top. Turn it on graph it, and what we've got is the com combine. Notice it's crossing the x-axis at negative 2 and positive 2. And so when we go second calc, integrate, oops, uh, lower, no. Second calc, number 7. The lower limit is negative 2. The upper limit is positive 2. Shows us we're getting the area and our answer should be 21.333. Okay, we should have gotten that from that calculation as well. And I'll leave that for you to do because you'll probably do a better job than I did. Okay, but that's all you really need to be able to do from you. This is the most advanced. The other ones in the homework, they all give you the boundaries. So you've got, you're given one function, the other function, graph them, figure out which one's on top, and then just subtract them, and you'll be fine. Um, and you're, you're able to do it with the graphing calculator this way, or also analytically by integrating and doing the calculations. And again, I, I encourage you to do both. As you saw today, I, I was messing up with one, but by doing the other, I was catching it. And it works. OK. We're almost done, because that's pretty much it. Let's see. So here's an explanation of what to do. Area between two curves, find all points of intersection. Again, we used to have more questions where they did that. I looked through the homework. They don't give you a single one. But I did look at the test that gave you one. So I said, you got to learn. You gotta, we got to show you how to do one with intersections if we're going to put that on the test and not give you any of them in the homework. Okay. What you might want to do is the ones in the homework where they give you those, see if you can find the points of intersection just for practice. Okay. Uh, in the textbook, they probably do. But anyway, um, we find those intersection points algebraically by solving where the two functions are equal. So we just set them equal to 0, solve for x. Okay. We might have to solve a quadratic. Um, and then that gives us our intervals, or we're given the intervals. And then we find the area of each of the regions we found. Now this is, again, going with the more complicated that there could be like one was on top and then was on the bottom. So we have to, sometimes we have to do this two different times. We're not going to do that to you. It's all one that's always on top. 
Uh, so it's the, the taller one minus the smaller one. And it does say here, if you did it the wrong way, all you would do is you'd get a negative area, which, oh wait, you can't have negative area, it's supposed to be positive, I just did the subtraction the wrong way. So you could even do this without, if you don't have your graphing calculator, just take a guess. If you get a negative answer, the amount is right, it's just not negative, okay? It would, you'd get the same thing from the positive. Um, we're, we're only gonna have one area, so sometimes, there, again, there's questions that had multiple areas because they cr crisscrossed, they went up and down, so we won't be doing step three. Um, one more case, but what time is it? You wanna do one more? It's up to you, it's four o'clock. 3.50, I could do this in five minutes. Okay, let's do it. Oh, why, don't, why don't you come on up? You'll probably do better, no. <laughs> I've got a real fuzzy head today, so. Okay, so this one, find the area of the indicated region. So notice they give us boundaries. This is, in fact, you can see the way this is written small. I took this out of the homework. Again, it was Spring's homework, so it might be a little different. We suggest you graph the curve to check whether one is above the other, whether they cross, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so between y equals x and y equals x to the third. So those are our two functions. f of x equals x, f of x equals x to the third. Um, and this is our boundaries. So we will graph them first, just to see which one's on top in that boundary area. So again, I'm going to now clear the first two. I'm going to leave this y1 equals y2. Uh, which one do you think is gonna be on top, x to the third or y equals x? Any guesses? Yeah, uh, let's try, I, oops, um, let's put x, I think x ends up being on top, but I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, then I'll just, uh, to the, what was it, to the third? Yeah. Oh, I gotta turn off the combined function. Turn that off. I think I'm right, uh, but it's it's we're going from negative one to one. Oh, this is actually one that does give us. So it's a little bit more complicated than I think you're going to get. Let me uh, zoom in so we can see it a little bit better. Zoom too far in. Okay, so we can see uh, we're going from negative one to one, um, but what the points they give us are where, where they intersect. But notice for the first half, the x to the third is on top. For the second half, the y equals x is on top. Okay, um, so think they've changed the homework. You won't have one quite as complicated as this, but I'll show you how to do it. It's not, it's not really a big deal. We're gonna break it into two pieces. We're gonna go from negative one to zero and do that integration. And then we're gonna go from zero to one, do that integration, and then add the two areas together. When we go from negative one to zero, which one's on top? The red is x cubed. So we're gonna do x cubed minus x going from negative one to zero. And then we're gonna add it to it going from zero to one, we're gonna do x minus x to the third. Because this is one where I said there was, that could possible, right? And I think in the spring we gave you questions like this I don't remember seeing any, but I didn't graph them all, so maybe you will run across something like this. Uh, so let's go ahead and do it. We just have to, from the graph, that's the only way we know is if we graph them, that one, that it switched. That's the only way to do it. Unless you're really like a genius and you can just see it in your mind, <laughs> I can't. But you still have to be able to visualize it all. So we're gonna do these two things. 
and again this should be dx um, so x any questions so far we good right so we the top minus the bottom the top minus the bottom and the the function switched that's what we did there we looked for those points of intersection where they happened and that's how I came up with the zero the zeros where they, they crossed in the middle and they one became on top so what's when I integrate x to the third what do I get x to the fourth divided by four when I integrate x to the one what do I get x squared over two okay and this part is going to go from negative one to zero and then I'm going to add together this region and again when I integrate x to the one I'm going to get x squared over two and then when I get negative x to the third when I integrate that I'm going to get x to the fourth divided by four and this one I'm going to go from zero to one and then again remember the nice thing about zero when we plug in something that has a bunch of x's and zeros in there it's all zero okay so the first half 0 to the fourth over 4 minus 0 squared over 2 minus negative 1 to the fourth over 4 minus negative 1 squared over 2 and then we've got this plus over here you put in the 1 first so 1 squared over 2 minus 1 to the fourth over 4 minus 0 squared over 2 minus 0 to the fourth over 4. Again, hopefully you see that this part here is a big 0 and this early part here is a big 0. So we calculate inside nice thing of how having one one to the fourth power negative one to the fourth power is positive one so this is one fourth minus one half and this negative six out front one fourth minus one half is negative one fourth does that make sense because one fourth is half of a half and um, so let me take that up here this is negative negative one-fourth so we'd add so that's a positive one-fourth um, so that takes care of this one this one's zero so then we get plus we get one-half minus one-fourth which is also one-fourth right you could get a common denominator one-half is actually two-fourths two minus one is one-fourth so the second part here We'll move up here is plus one fourth what's one fourth plus one fourth it's two fourths which is also one half the area between those two curves is one half okay now that's a little bit more complicated to put it in because we'd have to break up those regions so it's, it's you know the technologies may be not worth going back to but yeah, maybe this one's in there maybe there are a few like this I had like so I didn't graph them all I just went over I do know they gave you the in in all of them they gave you the uh, boundaries so you don't have to find the intersections although that they gave you the where the intersections are they do not tell you which one's on top which one's on bottom so you do have to graph them take a look get used to doing it but notice it's the integration part once we get it set up it's the same thing we're doing um, and this is the end of the road as far as for exam three do this stuff start into the reviews I'll be posting some stuff that help with the reviews uh, maybe making a few videos as needed uh, so we'll get through this test three that Monday we have a review day Wednesday is the test day yeah we're done with this unit we got three more to do before the final um, one of them may or may not be extra credit they sometimes they make it extra credit sometimes they don't we'll see where we right 12 6 is the elasticity that is extra credit um, 
Yes, yes. So it's a good topic to do, and 